All right, hi guys. Uh, today we get to look at some additional, pun intended, um, identities here. Uh, they are called our sum and difference identities. They're really helpful in, in finding uh, sine, cosine, and tangent of some angles that aren't on our unit circle. Uh, we won't get to how to do that quite yet in, in this video. Today we're just going to focus on the development of these identities. Um, if you want to pause the video right now and, and write these down, you, you're welcome to do that. Um, and then I'll just start um, explaining here in a second um, what this means. All right, so uh, take a look at what we have here. Uh, if we're taking the cosine of either a sum of two angles, so the cosine of x plus y, or the difference, the cosine of x minus y, so we subtract the two angles, we get this identity. Uh, kind of interesting looking here that we have a minus plus, and here's how we read this. This is what happens. If I look at the plus here, because that's on the top, so the cosine of x plus y equals the cosine of x times the cosine of y. We take the top one here minus the sine of x, sine of y. So the plus switches to a minus. And if I take the cosine of x minus y, that's the cosine of x, cosine of y, plus the sine of x, sine of y, the minus switches to a plus. That's why the plus or minus gets switched to a minus or plus, and we show that by just flipping that. All right, so it's pretty cool here. If we're taking the sum or difference of two angles, this is a formula that we can use to find uh, what that is by taking the cosines and the sines of the individual angles. Same thing for sine. Notice it looks quite similar here. Um, this time, however, the plus or minus remains a plus or minus. It doesn't switch like up here where the plus switched to a minus. Um, here the plus stays a plus and the minus is a minus. Notice the other difference here. This is a cosine times cosine and a sine times sine, so we end up with the same trig function uh, for both angles. Here we switch them and we take sine times cosine, sine of the first, cosine of the second angle, and then we take the cosine of the first times the sine of the second. Tangent um, looks a little bit different because tangent is always different, right? The tangent of x plus or minus y uh, is the tangent of x plus or minus tangent of y, so the sine stays the same but in the denominator it switches, one minus or plus the tangent of x, tangent of y. So in this video, my goal is to prove two of these for you, um, to understand why these really are what they are. Um, we're gonna use quite a bit of geometry to do this, uh, which is gonna be really fun. So we're gonna choose actually the cosine of x minus y. We'll do the difference for cosine, and then we'll do the tangent, we'll actually do both of them at the same time. All right, so let's prove the cosine difference formula. And what we got to take a look at here is that we have two different angles. And we're going to end up taking the cosine of both angles, the sine of both angles, and then the cosine of the difference of the two. So we need to find the difference of those angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sketch of a unit circle to pick some angles x and y and go from there. So let's say that, yeah, let's go with green, that here's my angle x. So this point we know would be the cosine of x comma the sine of x. So this angle right here is x. That point is the cosine of x times the sine of x. Now we also need an angle y. Okay? And we don't want it to be the same angle, so let's draw it somewhere else. Let's say y is maybe this angle right here. Okay? So when we rotate from our standard position up here, that angles y, that makes this point the cosine of y, the sine of y. So here's what's cool here. This is what we're going to do. Notice we're proving the difference formula. Um, we are proving the cosine of x minus y. So x minus y is actually an angle itself. And where do we see that in our diagram? Well, if from here to there is x, and there to there is y, where is the angle 
x minus y. It's the difference between the two. It's actually this angle right here, this interior angle in a triangle that we're going to form right there. So actually, let me erase those arcs. That angle in here is the angle x minus y. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the first of two triangles that we're going to set up. Now, what we're going to do then is we're going to take this whole thing and we're actually going to rotate it back to standard position. So let me take the orange side and rotate it back to standard position. So this point, that's a pretty easy point. That's just one zero, isn't it? Okay. Now let's take this green and let's rotate it with the orange maybe right about where does it look the same maybe right about there okay. so that we've taken this entire triangle and rotated it back to standard position we have two congruent triangles here this is x minus y okay. so these two triangles are congruent now, what are the coordinates of this point then? Well, we know the x coordinate is always the cosine of the angle. So this is going to be the cosine of x minus y. And then it's going to be the sine of x minus y. All right, so there's our setup. And the reason that we like this setup is because right here we have a cosine of x minus y. And that is what we're trying to prove the identity for. And then we have all these other pieces. We know where the cosine of x is, the sine of x, the cosine of y, the sine of y, and so on. And what's uh, neat about this is that we've created two congruent triangles. Now, what does it mean for triangles to be congruent? All their angles are congruent and all their sides are congruent. So the big thing for us means that this is congruent to that. Those two sides are congruent. Now let me throw some labels here. Let's call that A, B, C, and D. So we really know A, B equals C, D, doesn't it? So let's find the length of A, B in terms of X's and Y's. Let's find the length of C, D in terms of X's and Y's and then set them equal to each other and see what happens. So let's start with A, B. Okay, so forget CD right now. Let's just start with AB. How long is this? Well, it's the distance between the points A and B. So we can use the distance formula, which is also just another form of the Pythagorean theorem. To find that, it's going to be the square root of, let's see here, which order do I want to subtract these? I think let's do x's first. Cosine of x minus cosine of y squared okay, plus sine of x plus sine of y squared. Now let's, let's take some time to simplify this a little bit before we go to cd. Um, do not make the mistake of thinking the square root's going to cancel out each of those squares. Not going to happen with that sum there. Okay. But let's um, take some time and let's actually multiply this out. Cosine of x minus cosine of y squared. Cosine of x, cosine of y squared. I'm not going to write that out. Um, I'm just going to do what we or show what we get when we square it, right? So we'd have a cosine squared. We'd have a minus 2 cosine of x, cosine of y. And then we would have a plus cosine of y, squared of y. Now if I do the same thing for this, I'm going to have sine squared. That looks like a plus. That better be a minus, right? Minus 2 sine x. I think I need to shift this whole thing over. Come on, scoot over. One more attempt. Ah, okay. We'll just go with it. Sine x, sine y, 
plus the sine squared of y. Sorry to crunch that in there. And the square root's over the whole thing. Uh, now we can continue to simplify this when we notice some things. Here I have a cosine of x, or cosine squared of x, and what do I have over here? A plus sine squared of x. What does that give us? We know that gives us 1. Okay. Then, here I have a cosine squared of y and a plus sine squared of y. That's again the Pythagorean identity, which gives us 1. So what I've underlined in the blue gives us 1. What I've underlined in the green gives us 1. So we have a total of 2. We have 2 minus 2 cosine of x cosine of y minus 2 sine of x sine of y, and that's all under the square root. All right? So that's AB. Now let's find CD. CD is a little bit simpler. Uh, I'll just take a picture of our diagram. Go to the next page here. I'm going to get rid of that stuff. I'll just cover it with a, make it disappear here with a all white shape. There we go. All right, let's find CD. I'll learn from my last problem here. Give myself more room. CD, okay. Distance formula. Cosine of x minus y minus 1 squared plus sine of x minus y minus 0 squared. So, CD, let's see here, yeah, let's multiply that out. Cosine squared of x minus y minus 2 cosine of x minus y plus 1 plus, now that minus 0 is gone, and we have a sine squared of x minus y. Now, just like on the last one, notice I have a cosine squared of an angle. I don't care that it's x minus y. I have the cosine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of that same angle. Okay. So what I've underlined in blue is equal to 1. It's cosine squared plus sine squared of the same angle. So we end up with the square root. So we have a 1 from what I've underlined in the blue. We also have a 1 here. So like before, we have a 2. And then we have a minus 2 cosine of x minus y. All right, so taking a look at my video, I know I have a few minutes left. Um, I'll just stop the video here and continue this in the next one.